In my video for the Rainbow Girl Science competition, I did not have time to consider using the Lego sound sensor. There is a possibility that this may be useful in allowing a quadriplegic to gain control of his wheelchair. Some of my research showed that there had been some attempts to control a wheelchair using the quadriplegic's voice. Usually this meant using voice recognition. There are some points for and against this. Good points. It is a very natural means of control. The quadriplegic does not need to learn to use some sort of code. There are theoretically a huge number of words that could be used to control the wheelchair. Bad points. Most of the attempts I read about used a very powerful laptop or connected to powerful computers via the internet to get good word recognition. This was a problem because I wanted something small that would be inexpensive and would work even where there was no internet connection. If a small computer chip was used, usually only a small number of words, perhaps two, three, or rarely four, could be recognized. This was a problem because I needed two commands to turn the voice recognition on and off, and at least four commands for wheelchair control, and would have preferred more. Dr. Graham tells me that pages from his website have been translated into 26 languages. If I used voice recognition, I would have to use different voice recognition for every one of these languages. It would be better if I could have something that did not have to be changed for different languages. One thing I thought about was Morse code. Morse code is a very old-fashioned system that uses dots and dashes to represent the letters of the English alphabet. For example, stop in Morse code would be this and forward in Morse code would be this. Good points. I could probably make this work on a small computer chip without the chip having to be connected to the internet. The computer chip would be inexpensive. Bad points. Morse code was only defined for the English letters and numbers, plus a few punctuation marks. It had no way of representing some of the extra symbols used in European languages or other languages such as Greek, Hindi or Chinese. Wikipedia comments that the long tones, called dashes, had to be three times as long as the short tones, called dots. I also found that Morse code required three lengths of silences. There was a short silence between dots and dashes that was one dot long, a medium length of silence between letters that was three dots long, and a longer silence of seven dots between words. This seemed extremely exact, and I was not sure how practical these exact requirements would be for a voice-operated wheelchair control. I also researched the Chinese telegraph code. In Chinese, they don't have individual letters. Rather, they use characters for each word. The Chinese telegraph code uses four numbers for each character, the numbers giving the page number, column, and row of the character in a code book. The Chinese telegraph code is a fixed length, whereas Morse code varies in length. A possible solution could be this. It seemed to me that a combination of the dots and dashes idea from Morse code, together with the fixed length commands idea from the Chinese telegraph code, could be a possibility for wheelchair controlled by a quadriplegic. However, I would want to modify the dots and dashes so that the strict length requirements of Morse code were not necessary. I thought that I could use a calibration method by using short and long sounds that would be timed by the computer chip, without having the sounds and the silences between them having to be really exact. If I could make these commands simple, they would have the advantage that they did not have to change for different languages, making this solution applicable universally. If I used a fixed length command, like the Chinese telegraph code, of two long or short sounds, say, dits or das, sample commands could be this. Going forward is da da, turning left is da dit, turning right is dit da, and stopping is dit dit. This approach could be extended. If three sounds were used, I could get eight separate commands, which would probably be enough for simple wheelchair control. Six of the eight commands would be forward, backwards, turn left, turn right, sideways right, and sideways left so that the wheelchair will not respond to the sounds associated with eating or speaking the remaining two commands will be used to turn the sound sensor on and off eyebrow movements up and down could be used for this purpose this solution seemed to me to offer a good alternative to my robo girls entry and had the advantage that it would not interfere with speaking eating or burping and still allow the quadriplegic who are not able to learn to independently move their eyebrows or their ears to control their wheelchair